why they shouldn't listen to people like me and why people like me are not credible to be listened to. That what we say has no validity. Now, if that is true, then what do you have to tell people for? If, if they're just nutters, well, leave them. They're not a problem, are they? Who's going to believe nutters? Not many. The problem for them is that what we're saying does have validity. And people perceiving world events are increasingly realising that it makes more sense to see that these events are manipulated into place rather than they're acting or happening by random accident. And so this problem is being met with more and more attempts to dismiss and discredit people who are actually uncovering what's really happening as opposed to the movie script that we're told by the mainstream media. We've had in very recent times the British Prime Minister, David Cameron, feeling it necessary for some reason to say publicly that the conspiracy, because that's what it is, to uh, manipulate the result of the EU referendum, in and out public referendum, is not a David Icke style conspiracy. Why would he feel the need to say that? And we're having uh, academia more and more uh, coming in, saying that uh, people that believe in conspiracy theories have some kind of psychological problem. And if that's true, what is the problem for authority that makes it feel the need to try more and more, and we've seen nothing yet, to discredit those who are uncovering what those in authority don't want the public to know. This is uh, David Cameron. He uh, took a break in 2014 from selling uh, snake oil to speak at the UN General Assembly. And he was talking about conspiracies when it was about defeating the ideology of extremism. The peddling of lies about a 9-11 plot or that the 7-7 London attacks were staged and the idea that Muslims are persecuted all over the world as a deliberate act of Western policy are conspiracy theories. The fact that Muslims are being persecuted all over the world as a deliberate act of Western policy is a conspiracy theory. Uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya. Syria. It's not happening, it's just a theory. And talking about the conspiracy theory of a, a concept of an inevitable clash of civilizations. It's happening. And even though they're all true, ah, because they're all true, they have to be discredited with this term conspiracy theorist or conspiracy theory which actually came into more widespread use as a result of a deliberate policy of using that term by the CIA to discredit those uncovering the uh, real background to the Kennedy assassination and other assassinations in the 60s like that of Martin Luther King. We must be clear, snake oil man went on, to defeat the ideology of extremism, we need to deal with all forms of extremism, not just violent extremism. Now, I'm going to pass that, not just violent extremism, through our Orwellian translation unit. And it comes out as, we must silence those telling the truth about what we're really doing. He goes on. For governments, there are some obvious ways we can do this. We must ban preachers of hate from coming to our countries. 
we must prescribe organizations that incite terrorism against people at home and abroad. Now, that's the front. A lot of people now, genuine peaceful protesters and activists, are asking why they are being prosecuted or blocked by laws that were brought in on the pretext of fighting terrorism. Because the answer is that that's exactly what it was, a pretext. You look at these anti-terrorism laws and they're so widely um, applicable in the way they're written on purpose that they can be applied against anybody. That's the idea, just to get them in. So um, when he, uh, Cameron's talking here about um, extremism and terrorism, what he's really talking about is in the wider context as we move through uh, targeting those who are uncovering the truth or protesting about government policy. Um, he says we must stop the so-called non-violent extremists. Non-violent extremists are people who are exposing through words and peaceful uh, ways what the government is and uh, the authorities in general are really doing. We must stop the so-called non-violent extremists from inciting hatred and intolerance in our schools, our universities, and yes, even our prisons. Intolerance. Um, intolerance for governments lying to us is what he's talking about. Of course, he says, there will be those who will argue that this is not compatible with free speech and intellectual inquiry. He should have added... But then that's the idea. So we shouldn't stand by and just allow any form of non-violent extremism exposing the government peacefully. But the right-wing extremists in government, they're not a problem. And the racists in government, they're not a problem. And he says to combat this, we must support the building blocks of free and open societies. So when's he going to start in Britain then? This is a man who is so blatantly manipulating and engineering through lies and suppression of the alternative to the lies, the European referendum, talking about a free and open society. And then, after 9-11, when you know, all that mayhem is taking place, George Bush boy George Bush, said again in an address to the United Nations, November the 10th, 2001, um, he denounced the emergence of, quote, outrageous conspiracy theories that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. Again, all that mayhem, and he has to go out and make a specific point about Conspiracy theories, giving another version of really what happened on 9-11. Why? Because the official story of 9-11 is so full of holes. It's a joke. And it's not about shifting blame away from the terrorists. It's shifting the blame away from the patsies and those blame for it to hide the fact that the real terrorists... Those in the shadows that were ultimately controlling Boy Bush were the real people responsible for 9-11. Then we have the Obama administration. Um, top Azar, uh, Obama czar infiltrate all conspiracy theorists. We're nutters, right? What's the problem? We're not. That's the problem. Story goes, in a lengthy academic paper, President Obama's regulatory czar, Cass Sunstein, argued the US government should ban, ban conspiracy theorizing. Among the beliefs Sunstein would ban is advocating that the theory of global warming is a deliberate fraud, which it is. Now, if the basis of the global warming 
claims is so powerful and so obvious and so overwhelming. What is the problem of Nutter's challenging that official story? What problem could something that is so blatantly true, so they claim, have with a few people saying it's not? To the point where the US government should ban conspiracy theorizing. Why? Because, just like 9-11, the official story of global warming and what became climate change when the temperature stopped rising, is as full of holes and as nonsensical and as unsustainable as what happened on September the 11th, 2001, according to the official story. Um, Sunstein also recommended the government um, send agents to infiltrate extremists who supply conspiracy theories to disrupt the efforts of the extremists to propagate their theories. Note, what we're seeing, just mentioned it, but the confirmation goes on and on now. They're, they're trying to associate people who expose conspiracies behind world events. In fact, if people read my books at length, it's actually one gigantic conspiracy with many faces. Um, they are equating or trying to in the public mind extremism, extremists, fear with people, people called um, conspiracy or pokes over the eye. People called conspiracy theorists who are exposing um, the government. In a 2008 Harvard Law paper, Conspiracy Theories, how appropriate, Sunstein and a, a co-author who was a Harvard Law professor, ooh, he must be clever, ask, what can government do about conspiracy theories? I've got a question. Why do they feel there's anything to do about them if they're so nonsensical and obviously so? Uh, quote, um, we can readily imagine a series of possible responses. One, government might ban conspiracy theorizing. Two, I mean, you know, pinch me. Ouch, it's true. He actually said this. Um, Governments uh, might impose some kind of tax, financial or otherwise, on those who disseminate such theories. In a 30-page paper, Sunstein argues the best government response to conspiracy theories is cognitive infiltration of extremist groups. Why? They're nutters, aren't they? As I keep asking. Then... We've got the academic side. You know, God save us from academia. Please. I'll be a good boy. Just, 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 God save us from academia. This is a story this week. Um, believe in conspiracy theories. You're probably a narcissist. People who doubt, in effect, what they're saying, official um, uh, versions of events, are likely to be selfish and attention-seeking. Whoa. It goes on. Um, through a number of online studies, not many it turns out, researchers at the University of Kent have showed strong links between uh, the belief in conspiracy theories and those with narcissism and low self-esteem. Who says they found it? They did. In the internet age, conspiracy theories can incubate in quiet corners of the web. Ooh. But it may be psychological predispositions of believers which keep them alive rather than cold, hard facts. See, what um, they do with so-called conspiracy theories and conspiracy research is they um, give the impression all the time that it's just a theory. You know, they're just sitting in a darkened room and coming to these conclusions. Um, this is just one of my books. Um, thin, isn't it? The, the, the background information, the background supporting evidence for the fact that there is a global conspiracy to turn this into a global uh, um, prison state, unfolding by the day, by the way, just watch the news and, and your own life experience, that somehow there is no evidence when it's 
enormous. But they don't go there. Because they go there, they're on a loser. Let's have an open debate about this. No, they don't. I, um, I was on a television programme once with um, an academic from um, the University of London, I think it was. And um, this is a guy who, for any, anything alternative whatsoever, is akin to him to garlic to a vampire. He comes from the, uh, the Richard Dawkins school of the concrete mind. And he's having a go at what I'm saying and what have you, um, as the cameras are rolling. And I said to him, have you ever read any of my books? And he said, no. So how do you know what I'm saying, especially in detail? I've read it in the papers. This is an academic that we're supposed to be taking seriously in terms of some kind of knowledge of what they're talking about. Anyway, this story goes on about the University of Kent. Over the course of three online-based studies, researchers at the University of Kent showed strong links between the belief in conspiracy theories and negative psychological traits. Um, writing in the journal Social, uh, Psychological Pers and Personality Science, the team explained... Previous research linked the endorsement of conspiracy theories to low self-esteem. Now, one of the things that's building up here, um, and, and you'll see build up more and more, is not just a connection between those that can see conspiracies um, to manipulate world events uh, and terrorism, terrorists, but also the link between people that believe the government's lying and people with psychological problems. And this, is, this link's going to be made more and more um, strongly um, as we move along. And if people think that's far-fetched, well, look what happened in the Soviet Union. How many dissidents against the Soviet Union tyranny, exposing the tyranny, ended up in mental hospitals to keep them quiet because they were uh, challenging the, uh, the official version of the Soviet state, thus they had to be crazy, they had to be mad, by definition. Um, the results of these surveys, um, uh, where they ask people uh, to, if they agree with specific statements as to whether governments, for instance, carried out acts of terrorism on their own soil, yes, um, the results show that those people who rated highly on the narcissist uh, scale and who had low self-esteem were more likely to be conspiracy believers. Who says? They do. Lead author of the study, a lecturer in social um, psychology at Kent, ooh, again, must be clever, told Cypost.org, because conspiracy theories often refer to malevolent actions of groups, we wanted to distinguish whether it is a narcissistic image of the self or the group that predicts the endorsement of conspiracy theories. Note, it's never, is it the truth that predicts or accepts the in, and endorses conspiracy uh, claims in terms of explaining world events? The link they miss is the link between those who believe in conspiracies and those who believe, because they're intelligent, that governments and those in authority lie. And in terms of evidence, we only have the entire span of known human history to support that obvious fact and then we've had people mentioned it in a video cast recently we've had some acad 